Hey guys, this is Heather at Homeschool Culture. In today's video, I am going to do a flip through of 180 days of geography level five. So we do geography in our morning basket. I have a whole video on that, on everything that we plan on doing this year and how I plan on going through it. But I wanted to add some independent work for my son as well. And he loves working on maps. He loves geography in general. So I thought this would be a great jump start into some independent work. So I'm going to go through it with you and just show you some of the different activities. Just looking at the very first page, I was getting excited for him because I know he's going to have fun doing it. So I'm going to go ahead and flip the camera around and we'll get started. Okay, so like I said, this is a level five and it is 100 days of geography for fifth grade. I picked this up, I believe, um, on, it was either on Amazon or it was maybe Rainbow Resource. Um, you can see here that it does have additional grade levels. So if this is something I, you're going through and you like it, you could get it for other grade levels as well. And it says this is a practical resource, includes the study of the world in spatial terms, places and regions, physical systems, human systems, environment and society, and the use of geography. Um, how to use this book. There's a weekly structure. Day one is map, reading maps. Day two is creating maps. Read about it. It's day three. Day four is think about it. And day five is geography and me. For week one and two, so there is a total of, there's a total of 36 weeks. There are standards. So some of us have, we live in states where we have specific standards that we have to go by. And so this does show that as well. I really love this feature when curriculum does week one, day one, because it's just easier to put into the lesson book than having to look to each individual page, et cetera, et cetera. So I do like that feature. But let's look at the first one. So one thing I really like is just so far like day one, it says shade the state that you would like to visit. So it gives them opportunity to look at this map and think of a place that they might wanna go. And then like number two, what uh, is north of the state, south of the state, west, east and then describe the size of the state you chose and so i love those types of activities circle the continent where you live so it's the whole world map this is day two describe the continent's position so again they're having to use things like it's north of or south of east of west of etc day five follow the steps and complete the map so they're doing a mapping activity continuing with more map skills. And so that is going to be the first couple of weeks are these map skills. And I would say even if for some reason your child's never seen a, like a geography curriculum like this, I definitely think you could still, if your kiddo is in fifth grade, or de you could definitely still do this and just kind of go over the stuff with them if for some reason they don't know already. Or don't, don't ever be afraid to go down a level. So if your kiddo's in fifth grade now but never really had geography, and it's something that you want to do for the next couple of years, then, you know, go ahead and go down to maybe third grade. And then you can just build up that way since it looks like it might only go through sixth grade. All right, let's go back to the table of content. Each week has a topic. Okay, so week three, it talks about recycling, specifically Mexico and human environment interaction. Week four talks about the Pony Express, the United States and movement. Week five talks about politics, the United States, place and region. So the Appalachian region is week six, Canada and place and region. Week seven talks about tornadoes, tornado alley and the human environment and interaction. Week eight it talks about trade. Then we move into Asia, which so it's gonna talk about India, place and movement. Week nine talks about religion, we're in Israel. With, and then the geographical theme again is place. Week 10 is housing, and you'll talk specifically about Japan and place. Week 11 is population. So what I like about this is that it talks about different topics that maybe your kiddo hasn't ever heard before or goes maybe into greater de detail than your, kid, uh, your kiddo knows. But at the same time, they're still getting to uh, learn about these individual places as well and the geography themes. Continuing, vegetation and climates week 12 with Southeast Asia, I apologize, population was China. Vegetation and climate is the topic for week 12, location Southeast Asia, geographical theme, place and region. Transportation is week 13, talking specifically about Australia and movement. All right, week 14, Uluru, Uluru, I think is how you pronounce it, it's in Australia. 
and the geographical theme is location is place. 15 is climate with Australia, population again with Australia, absolute and relative locations in Australia, natural resources in Venezuela, which makes sense because it's known as one of the um, countries with the most natural resources. Peru is going to talk about regions on week 19. Week 20, we're going to talk about rivers, specifically the Amazon area. 21 will be landforms, Argentina, 22 transportation, South America, 23 natural resources, South America, South Africa, landmarks in Egypt, language, Zimbabwe, Africa, imperialism, Africa, climate, Africa, coastal erosion, France, language, the Baltic states, renewable resources, Scandinavia, imports and exports, the United Kingdom, Languages are language in Greece, immigration, the locations, the world, longitude and latitude for week 34, location, world. 35 is going to specifically talk about states in the United States and 36 state capitals, the United States. And so the way each week is set up is they'll do a mapping activity day one. So this is specifically to South Africa. Creating maps on day two, so they're actually drawing a map. Day three, they're gonna read about the area of the world that they're learning about. Day four, they're gonna think about it, so they're gonna look at things like, things like charts and graphs, and then from the, that data, they have questions that they'll answer. And then day five is considered what they call geography and me. Like this one is, not every country di mines diamonds, but they do have natural resources. Make a list of at least 10 other natural resources. Put a star by any of them you think are found in your area. Then explain why those resources are important. And so again, it just gets them uh, critically thinking. And I, I love the chart work that they do on day four. And it looks like they're using different types of graphs. They're using like a pie graph here. They had bar graphs before. All right, guys, that is it. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed this. I hope it was a good look through. Again, I just kind of went over the table of contents first to kind of give you an idea. And then instead of going over the whole book, just kind of showing you how it is set up. I'm excited about it. Of course, I chose something to do independent work that I actually really like but I, he likes it too. So I'm very, very excited that he's gonna be able to just be handed this and then every day get to work on it himself with of course me close by for help if needed. If you have used this brand or something similar, or is there another, if there's a geography resource that you really like, put those down below too, because I, I this obviously isn't just the only geography resource out there. Um, there are tons of them. So if there's something that you've used, so put those down below so that other people can research other ones to find what best fits their family. On that note, I hope you have a super blessed day and a blessed week, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.